guys have physical tells. Tells, huh? Yeah. It's called a face. Show me the face a uh, 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 orc makes when he just shut the fuck up, and don't say shit, and just try to work. So I finally had a chance to check out Netflix's big deal movie. It's called Bright, and it stars Will Smith and Joel Edgerton. It's directed by David Ayer, who brought us uh, Suicide Squad, and he also brought us End of Watch and Training Day. So this guy has made some really cool movies. And uh, Bright, if you've ever seen the movie Alien Nation about a, a, a human cop and an alien cop, you kind of get the sense of what you're talking about here. This is a movie that really fuses the very gritty, realistic tone of being a police officer in uh, yeah, somewhat dystopian Los Angeles, which might be a reflection on uh, modern day civilization, as a matter of fact, uh, where we've got a, uh, you know, a human cop played by Will Smith partnered with an orc cop who is played by Joel Edgerton and all kinds of makeup that makes him virtually unrecognizable. And I'm sure that he and his agent are not especially thrilled that they are in this movie. I guess they cash the checks, but uh, you, you, you could probably fool any Anybody if you said Joel Edgerton was in this movie because it sure doesn't look like Joel Edgerton. Uh, anyways, there's some big friction between Will Smith and uh, Joel Edgerton and also the rest of the human cops on the police force. Nobody wants this orc around, right? He's uh, uh, part of a, a race that uh, is looked down upon by the humans. They conquered the orcs many, many millennia ago, as we're told through the fiction of the film. Uh, and this guy, uh, Joel Edgerton, has his teeth filed down to kind of make him sort of even stand out more. He's not wanted by the orcs, he's not wanted by the humans, so he's very tense there. And the movie starts off actually with Will Smith getting shot uh, while his partner is doing something other than protecting him. So there's a lot of, uh, you know, back and forth about who trusts who, and um, there's friction right out of the gate, you know, which was kind of an interesting dynamic here. Unfortunately, Joel Edgerton's makeup and his, uh, you know, mouth stuff and everything makes his, it hampers his performance a little bit. We don't really care about the character that much because he's not really able to emote under all of the latex and all the other stuff that he's got there. Will Smith does his usual Will Smith stuff. This guy is one of the most charming actors ever to enter the realm of movies and uh, he is he is enjoyable in this for sure. I also really like this concept. I like this uh, idea of this mashup between fantasy and reality or a you know a version of reality. There's some pretty elaborate special effects and some cool uh, you know, fantasy laden moments in here that I thought were enjoyable. It's certainly, there's eye candy in here and it's certainly watchable, but I just didn't think it it really delivered. It doesn't really deliver uh, a sense of the, the, the racial allegory that we're trying to play with here. And uh, it's a little too ham-fisted and, and uh, it kind of beans you over the head with its messaging and its, its connections to a lot of the, uh, you know, the concerns that we still have in our society today. I applaud the efforts there and I think it's cool that Netflix took the chance with this and I think David Ayer, uh, who does a pretty good job at building th this sense of, uh, uh, you know, fly on the wall camera work and stuff and making it almost docudrama like. I really liked End of Watch. It's still probably one of my favorites, if not my favorite David Ayer movie. Uh, and this echoes a little bit of the work that he did in there, but it, it, it's a little too, uh, it's a little too on the nose and a little too sort of in love with itself and it doesn't really get a sense and a chance to, to breathe and uh, you know, take us to new areas. And I thought of Alienation the whole time that I was watching this and I preferred that movie and I preferred there was a TV show that they made out of it too. It's a great concept. I mean, the fish out of water buddy cop movie, uh, you know, with a with a violent streak and a, a, and a streak of realism. These guys are caustic and swearing. The fuck can you make a shootout awkward? Interesting concept not fully realized. I know everybody has been watching this movie. I think Netflix is very satisfied with the uh, audience retention. Like I say, it's, you know, it's it's not what I quite wanted it to be, but I did watch the whole thing and I was entertained a little bit along the way. And I think everybody that tunes into Bright on Netflix is kind of impressed by the sheer amount of special effects and this uh, kind of high concept idea. Uh, Netflix has greenlit a sequel to this movie, so we're going to see it again. I don't know if every one of these actors is going to be involved. I didn't hate Bright. It's certainly not trash, but I don't think it lives up to the promise of its concept. It's a good idea. Uh, and there are some fine, fine actors in this movie, some fine filmmaking in this movie. It just doesn't all gel together as, as well as I would like it to. I'm going to give Bright a 6 out of 10.